Rugby World Cup 2023, folks. Italy and Uruguay. I've just watched this one a little bit belated this morning here in New Zealand. Apologies. It was on at 3.45 in the morning and I opted to watch it when I woke up. At kind of a more natural time. But yeah, we'll go through some key events and stats. But overall, pretty good game. Italy given the shock of their lives at halftime. Going into the sheds behind. But showed a bit of class and uh during that yellow card especially in the second half we're able to pull the scoreboard away from uruguay i feel like the officiating probably going to be a bit of a talking point for this one but yeah we'll go through the game and you guys can let us know your thoughts and then i'm going to drop my kids at school um italy were given a warning early about the threat that uruguay posed at the breakdown and uh, I don't know that they ever quite really got to grips with how good the Uruguayan defenders are. I mean, they weren't able to keep it up the entire game, but geez, they were good. Especially Adal. Fantastic. But won them a penalty early. Uruguay missed that one. So there's three points gone. Um, Italy, though, they hit back with a few scrum penalties. And uh, that kind of led eventually to Pani going over on the seventh minute to make it a seven point to nil lead they had the tmo at the double check that it was all good but the try is given so italy would the lead that you think they're gonna get but uruguay keep on with the turnovers man and i write a note like italy need to be careful on their exits they keep trying to run it out their own half you're gonna put yourself under a lot of pressure if uruguay can get turnovers and they have been doing it with ease we saw it against france as well then the tmo gets involved for a clean up by negri um and it's a weird one because it's barely anything. But, I mean, Angus Gardner didn't want to give anything for it. He said it's kind of a glancing blow. He said it's just a clean out for me. He didn't seem to want to give anything. But eventually he gives a, uh, a penalty kick. I guess because there is the most incidental of incidental kind of head contact. So he goes for that. Then there is a Uruguayan mall. Kessler goes close but ultimately short. So the score remains what it is. The Uruguay penalty count is starting to add up, though. They've got scrum penalty conceded, offside penalty conceded. Italy are looking to turn the screws, but it's their bloody idiot substitutes who get in the way. I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like it. I'm not sure Italy were going to score anyway, but they've got a bunch of substitutes warming up inside the Uruguayan goal area, and they kind of get in the way. So any chance they had is gone. That is thick. Not in a good way. That's dumb. That's so dumb. You need to at least have some kind of match presence that you're involved in the game, even if you're a substitute warming up on the sideline. Goodness me. That's one of the first. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. That is just just dumb. And uh, Uruguay keep winning penalties at the breakdown, man. It's it's pretty amazing. I mean, Echeverri almost gets one from an intercept as well, putting the Italian guys under pressure. And then uh, Nicola Canone gets a yellow card for a cynical kind of uh, play. Uh, killing the ball on their own goal line after Uruguay had gone like 12 phases. So what did Uruguay do? Do they try to turn the screws during the yellow card? Yes, they do. They opt for touch. They maul it. It's an on-field no try, but they rule there's been a collapse maul by Fischetti. So he goes to the bin and it's a penalty try. So suddenly it's a seven points apiece game and it's 13 against 15. What can Uruguay do during the yellow card? Well... They kind of mucked it up at the start. They had a forward pass. They conceded a penalty both during the yellow card. But then, speaking of dumb, Italy, man, bro. Nema um, comes in after the whistle and gets a penalty reversed. When you've got 13 men on the field, don't be dumb. That's like Along with the substitutes in the end goal area, those are two of the dumbest things I've seen. Like, you need to be smart when you've got 13 guys on the field, not extra dumb and add pressure to your team. Um, and then when there's a Tommy Allen high tackle on Imagia, uh, there's another kind of warning for the Italians, too many penalties conceded. Uh, they go for a maul again, Uruguay. This time it's sacked, but the forwards go through a heap of phases before they get it to Freitas on the left wing. It's a well-worked little bit of uh, Uruguayan magic. So great conversion from the sideline, bends it round 14-7. They finally get those points they needed during the yellow cards. And um, they end the half with a great little well-taken drop goal, which they had to TMO to make sure it went over. But it did, so 17-7. At that point, from a New Zealand point of view, I'm thinking, New Zealand shouldn't be worried about this quarterfinal against Italy because these guys are playing some dumb rugby. They're trying to run it out their own half when they've got, Uruguay's got threats all over the park at the breakdown. 
and just discipline and awareness wise they are not there but second half is a bit of a different story I mean still penalty count 7-4 at half time so the Italians almost double uh, Uruguay's won t- four turnovers to one Italy's had to make 95 tackles to 42 second half though like I said Villaseca gets yellow carded for a high tackle on um, on Pani. Uh, it's one of those ones where I think we're going to see more of it. Like I mentioned it in a pre-tournament chat with the guy from Forbes magazine. Um, guys are going to highlight any time they've been hit in the head. And he does it by like, you know, he asks for, for water and squirts. And maybe it's legit. But players are going to do that. They're not going to roll around on the floor like they do in soccer. But... You know, squirting a bit of water on your face because you're sore in the face because you've just taken a shot to the face. Um, it's it's not the most... Well, it's a tough yellow. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a bit of an old stick in the mud. He's upright. He is upright. <clears throat> but you feel like Pani kind of dips and then goes into him. But anyway, he's upright. you got to bend at the hips nowadays. So um, Villaseca gets yellow carded. And I feel like that's the turning point of the match, man. I mean, Nicotera gets held up from a mall after uh, a wee attack, and then Ardara wins another turnover. So it looks like Uruguay are going to manage the card okay. But on 46 minutes, uh, they get one through Lomaro. There's no turnover this time. The Italian carries. It's quick ball. Good carries over the advantage line. And they get a second during the yellow card after Uruguay get charged down. And again, it's quick Italian ball. When they got quick ball, Italy looked legit. Uh, Iwani goes over for the second one. So they go from behind to 21-17 up. Then the Italians just take it up a gear, man. Allen has a good line break. Gets them some good field position. Canone is able to go over. 28-17. Uh, inside ball from Garbisi to Brex. 35-17. Penalty on 70 minutes. 38-17. Italy didn't get any more points after that. They were kind of pressurizing for it, but couldn't quite get it done. They got held up on 76 minutes, but... Yeah, ultimately, the game really turned around on that Villaseca yellow card. Maybe Uruguay should have scored more points during the double yellow. They didn't manage it as well as they could. But I thought at halftime they were looking pretty decent. Really, really pretty decent. Uh, Run meters, 562 to 491. Italy finished with more of those. Possession finishes 50-50. But it was 42-58. 42-58? Italy had 42%. Yeah, it must be. 42% 42% in the first half, 58% in the second half. So it swapped. Totally a game of two halves. Territory was 56-44, but Italy only had 38% in the first half, had 73% in the second half. So the second half was just Italy, man. Clean break, 6-4 to Uruguay. Defenders beaten 21-15 to Italy. Penalties conceded as 10-8. Uruguay conceding more. Remember, uh... Italy had conceded seven in the first half, so only one in the second. Much better performance in that regard. Two yellow cards to one. Again, split by halves. Italy finished with a tackling rate of 90%, which is top-notch. 139 tackles. Uruguay make 134. Uh, Garbisi, 134 metres, four defenders beaten. Looked all right at 12. Iwani, 11 carries. He was busy. Lamaro, uh, 16 from 19 tackles. Continues to tackle the house down. Echeverri, 144 metres, a clean break, a defender beaten. Um, Alia, is it? Um, the uh, the big lock had 14 from 15 tackles. Ardal, five turnovers won. He was channeling his inner David Pocock. Man, he was amazing. He was amazing. If he'd won, if they'd won, he would have got man of the match, surely. Five turnovers won in a match is insane. It's like a hat trick of tries. That's, honestly, you, you don't get five turnovers won. It doesn't usually happen. But anyway... Uh, Uruguay have got Namibia next. That'll be their best chance to get a win, one would think, in this pool. Italy have got New Zealand, who will look at the second half with interest, but also likewise the first, because, yeah, it was a bit of a turnaround. But anyway, you guys let us know your thoughts. 38-17, Italy over Uruguay. Interesting game. Apologies for the delay. You guys take care. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.